Welcome to 12.5, and this section is on lines and planes, which really is, I'd say, one of the harder sections, um, or the first section of the textbook where you actually have to think about what you're doing. And um, for 12.5, I'm actually going to split this up into five parts. Yeah, it's long. Um, so in this video, we're going to talk about the equation of lines and planes. Um, in the second video, we'll talk about distances. Um, in the third equation, uh, in the third video, we're going to talk about uh, what happens when lines and planes intersect. Uh, in the fourth video, we're going to talk about skew, lines, parallel planes, and how to find distances between those guys. And then in the last video, uh, just a few other examples, maybe only one. Uh, I can only think of angles between planes for now. So let's hop in then to this video where we're talking about the equation of lines and how do we find the equation of lines. Well, you want to think about it this way. A line, right? What is a line? So in, in this case, um, our lines are going to be in three-dimensional space, right? And we have to separate the difference between a line and a curve. Uh, so what happens in a line is it's going to be straight. So a line is going to start out in a certain direction, and then it will just continue on in that direction forever. Okay? So there's not going to be any twists or turns in three-dimensional space. Um, it's just going to be a straight line. Okay, so that's how we call a line. And what do we need uh, in a line? In a line, we need a point. All right, so we need a point P. And then we need a direction, right? And this is given by V, which is going to be a vector. All right, V. Um, it's going to be a vector of direction, okay? And I know I said in the previous video that uh, unit vectors usually indicate direction, um, but in this case, it, v doesn't necessarily have to be a unit vector. So as long as you have v, um, which is a vector, and a point, uh, you, you, you can explain what the line is. And so how do we do that? Well, if you think about it, right? If you give me, uh, let's say, uh, this point, let's say you give me you give me a point P. Let's say P is equal to uh, one, two, negative one. Okay, and V is equal to, let's say, uh, negative two, negative two, two. All right. So how do I describe this line? Well, this line starts at 1, 2, 1, right? And it goes in the direction of negative 2, negative 2, positive 2. And so I would describe this line then as R of T, okay? So R of T, um, this this means position in space. This is what we're going to use for position in space, is equal to the point 1, 2, negative 1 plus some constant t, all right, so this is a t constant, you can think of it as time, times negative 2, negative 2, positive 2, okay? And this is how we uh, find the equation of this line. And so what is this t? This t is called a parameter, all right? And you can think of it as the time parameter, right? So uh, if one second has passed, then we're, um, we're, we're one second down the line, right? So, so then this would be t equals 1. Right? And then if we go here, then this is t equals 2, right? And then uh, if we go here, this is t equals 3, and so on, right? And t can be uh, fractions, it can be irrational numbers, like square root of 2, it doesn't matter. Um, t also can be negative, right? So you can also be behind the point initially on the line. And so this could be like at t equals 0, and um, this point here uh, would be t equals, or, sorry, this point is t equals 0. This would be t equals negative 1, t equals negative 2. Okay? And I want to point out then that I can find a similar line, right, by changing this guy right here. Okay? And why is that? Well, just let's think of it. What if I wrote r of t is equal to 1, 2, negative 1 plus, and now let's say v becomes... Uh, let's say u, which is now, or let's call it something else, let's call it v 
uh, squiggly uh, is now negative 1, negative 1, 1. Right? So now this is times plus t times negative 1, negative 1, 1. Well, you'll see that these two lines right here, these are the exact same. Why is that? So now, uh, if I use my blue vector here, so if this red line was negative 2, negative 2, positive 2, okay, it's not, but let's directly, what if it were, um, what is negative 1, negative 1, 1? Well, negative 1, negative 1, 1 is just essentially half this guy, right? Right, we're only going negative 1, negative 1, negative 1 units instead of 2, 2, 2 units. And so, so then t equals 1 would be here, right? for this new blue line, but t equals 2, we return to the exact same spot, right? So let's plug that in. So here, bottom here, if we have r of 2, that's equal to 1, 2, negative 1, plus 2 times negative 1, negative 1, 1, and that should get me uh, negative 1, 0, 1, right? So r of 2 is equal to that, but Above here, right, using this line, I'll get r of 1, which is equal to 1, 2, negative 1, plus 1, times negative 2, negative 2, 2, and you see that I end up then in the exact same space. So, what does that mean? It, it just means that this vector right here, right, this vector, v equals 1, 1, 1, and up here, I have v equals 2, 2, 2. Um, as long as they're scalar multiples of each other, right? As long as they're multiples of each other, um, your time parameter is going to take care of it, right? And so you're exactly talking about the same line as long as your point and the vectors are multiples of each other. So that's what I wanted to point out there, okay? So this is how you parameterize a line. You need a point and you need a vector. So what are some case, other cases that can happen? Well, Usually, they won't just give you the point and the vector. Usually, what happens is they'll give you two points. So, they'll give you two points, right? And now, you need to find the line. So, for example, what if they gave me 1, 2, negative 1, which is the first point, and let's say they gave me another point, Q. And let's say this point, Q, uh, what the heck, let's say it was negative 1, 0, 1, right? So, they give you two points, P and Q. And I should end up with one of these guys up here, right? I should end up with one of these two lines because that's exactly what I found. So how would I do that? Well, remember, you need a point and a vector. So we need a, we have two points, but we have no vectors. So we need to find a vector, right? Find a vector. V, right? And so how do we do that? Well, PQ will be our vector V, right? So let V be the vector pq, and so the vector pq then is, right, q, each component of q minus p, so I got negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2, 0 minus 2, which is negative 2, and then, uh, and then 1 minus negative 1, which is positive 2, right, and you see that now I have my vector pq, which is negative 2, negative 2, positive 2, and then now I have a vector, I have a p, and so my equation of a line, r of t, is equal to point 1, 2, negative 1, plus the time parameter t times negative 2, negative 2, positive 2, okay? And so this is how you do equations of lines. And this video is running kind of long, so let's split it up. I'm going to talk about equations of planes in the next video, and hopefully you understand um, why this is true, why we only need a vector and a point, okay? And the other important thing then is to understand why I can have these two different V's, right? Where I have V squiggly in blue right here, and I have regular V um, up here, and why these two lines are the same, even though my V's are different. And again, the key is that they're scalar multiple of each other, and the time parameter will take care of the lines.